you know, obviously your YouTube platform is is huge. Mm-hmm. Um, you you stream on there damn almost every day. Mm-hmm. Um, if y'all haven't seen his stream, I promise you, listen to his stream. <laughs> like this dude is hilarious, man. So, but um, you know, a lot With of that. times, mm-hmm. you know, even in the Twitter spaces, people will accuse you of being divisive amongst mm-hmm. an, in a diaspora. Like, what, what do you say to those people? No, those are people who think that they can get away with denigrating us. And for a long time, we didn't trip on it too much because there were a lot of people who were non-FBA who would low-key denigrate us. They would have all of these weird names for foundational Black Americans, like Akata, Jareer, Abid, Yanks. They had all these little weird terms. We didn't trip too much on it because I ain't mean, just talking shit. Mm. But when these people start getting over here and getting in political positions, and then they can dictate where our resources go, and they have that same anti-FBA disposition, now we're saying time out. When we have a Kamala Harris, who's not an FBA, but who cosplays as black when it's convenient and then Asian when it's convenient, mm-hmm. when we have her dictating where our resources is going to go, we have to say, hey, wait a minute. We don't want these people who are really not on code with us acting as our representatives, because that's very important. The dominant white society, they understand people who have a certain lineage, they will be on code with each other. Mm. So they let people get in political positions who don't have our lineage, like Barack Obama, Colin Powell, um, Eric Holder. Mm. These were people who didn't have any FBA lineage. So they put them in positions knowing that they would not do anything to help black people and it wouldn't mess with their conscience. Because Mm -hmm. if you do something to deny your people, it'll mess with your consciousness. People like Marion Barry, people can talk about him doing drugs or whatever, but he was a foundational black American and he did a lot of stuff for the people in D.C. Mm. Um, You will instinctively do things for the people from your lineage because you share a camaraderie with them. Mm. And the dominant society knows that. So they know how to kind of pit people against each other and get folks from different lineages to act as representatives. Like, for example, we got a reparations movement going Mm. on. Rally for reparations. Right, we got the, yeah. And early on, some years ago, when they were having these reparations committees that the dominant society, they were putting together, they purposely got people like Candace Owens, who identifies as Caribbean. They got a dude named Coleman Hughes, who's a Puerto Rican guy, who's aesthetically melanated like us, Mm. to speak on reparations as our representatives. And sure enough, they got up there saying, we don't need no reparations. Let's leave these good white folks alone. So that or, type or the of narrative, I, I came from my country and I was able to work right. my way up. Why you guys can't do the same thing? Right, yeah. right. So we got on the thing where we don't want all, all these non-FBA people trying to represent us because they're not even entitled to what we're supposed to get anyway. So a lot of them have this whole scorched earth mentality. If they can't get nothing, the hell nobody can't get nothing. And we don't need people like that representing us. And that's not divisive to say, hey, we don't need people trying to mislead us. Because they damn sure wouldn't let us, they won't let us do that over in their country. We can't go to uh, Nigeria or Jamaica to try to represent them or misrepresent them. They'll stone us, man. They wouldn't let us do that. Mm-hmm. 